JWST has been pointed at the supermassive black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. What it saw was surprising, and it didn't look anything like this. The black hole is not a dormant, quiet beast, but rather an active cosmic party, setting off flares all the time at random moments. In this video, we'll take a look at exactly what JWST saw how we can explain it, and why it saw anything at all if black holes are meant to be so, well, black. In 2022, the Event Horizon Telescope released this blurry image of our home galaxy's central supermassive black hole. Our galaxy is called the Milky Way, and the black hole is named Sagittarius A-star. Event Horizon Telescope, or EHT for short, uses telescopes all over the Earth. It's not just one telescope, but a whole team of them, imaging the black hole at the same time to create an image. This effectively acts like we have one Earth-sized telescope, but with some holes in it, and allows EHT to image distant objects that look faint and small from our point of view. Don't get me wrong, Sagittarius A star is still over 4 million times the mass of our Sun, clocking in at 8.54 times 10 to the 36 kilograms. That's this many zeros after that number. But black holes are also the densest objects in the entire universe. This means that they have relatively small radii, and it's also a long way away, adding to its small appearance. This is why we need what is effectively a planet-sized telescope to image it in this detail, and why it's still kind of blurry. That is a super quick explanation of what EHT is and how it kind of works. But I made a much more detailed video of how this image was taken back when it was released. So please check that out if you want more details. This EHT image also didn't use any JWST data. JWST is also not on the Earth. It's orbiting a point in space about 1.5 million kilometers away. So it would increase the effective size of the Event Horizon Telescope by quite a lot. Now, JWST has finally imaged the black hole, and for a long time too. What we have though now is just the pure JWST images, not combined with EHT from Earth. The results are still amazing though, for a single telescope. JWST is the biggest space telescope ever made, with a 6.5 meter mirror. This is big, but it's pretty tiny compared to the size of the entire Earth. So how good can this JWST image really be? Well, you give me your thoughts in the comments below. What the telescope saw was a bright blob that flared very often. It's not a static object, it's very active. These observations are the longest and most detailed ever taken of Sagittarius A-star. The study took a total of 48 hours of data, taken in 8 to 10 hour increments across one year. It used the near-infrared camera NERCAM on JWST to take the data and it's detailed enough to see how the environment of the black hole changes in real time. You see, these images aren't directly of the black hole itself. Black holes are black. They don't emit any light, or anything at all for that matter. Most supermassive black holes, and this one for sure though, are surrounded by enormous disks of matter. These disks are orbiting the black hole, and lots of that matter is falling into the black hole too being swallowed, never to return. Once matter is inside a black hole, it can never escape. Its future becomes inwards to the center of the black hole, and even light, the fastest thing in the universe, cannot escape. The accretion disk though, as we call this disk, is actually an incredibly bright object. The matter is swirling around the black hole, it's colliding with itself, and glowing brightly as it heats up due to those collisions, effectively feeling friction as it orbits the black hole. Since Sagittarius A star is a relatively small supermassive black hole, we're able to see this disk evolve and move and flare in real time with this JWST data. We did expect to see flares around Sag A star, but in reality, there are many more than predicted, meaning the region is much more active than anticipated, causing the brightness to change rapidly, randomly, and often. The accretion disk produced five or six big flares every single day, and several smaller sub-flares in between. It's a constant stream of flares with no periods of rest. Additionally, these flares are on an unimaginable scale. They're effectively massive bursts of light that are shining across 26,000 light years to reach our telescope. And we're seeing remarkably close to the event horizon of the black hole. That's the radius that marks the point of no return for light and matter falling into the black hole. To be honest, the amount of activity seen varies wildly over time. 
Some flares are faint flickers that last just a few seconds, while others are enormous eruptions that last longer and seem to occur most days. There are even tiny, fainter changes that look as if they simmer over a time span of months. Often we're watching a bubbling black hole that's simmering and flickering away, and then boom, a huge burst of brightness pops up. The exact cadence does seem to be random. It's exciting and changing every time we look at it. Hopefully, images like this will help us better understand the fundamental physics and processes happening in the environment of a supermassive black hole. How they feed on their accretion disks, how they grow, and how they influence the dynamics of our entire galaxy. However, the thing we must admit is that we don't exactly understand what physics is causing these flares. Yet, anyway. We have ideas, but nothing is certain. The researchers that led this work believe there are likely to be two distinct processes at play, one responsible for the short bursts and one responsible for the bigger flares. Minor disturbances in the disk seem likely to be generating those faint flickers. These may be similar to how the sun's magnetic field gathers, compresses, and then erupts into a solar flare. That's according to the study's lead author anyway. These would be on vastly different energy scales in the disk of a supermassive black hole, but the process may be similar to solar flares. That said, the big flares are currently being attributed to magnetic reconnection events. This is when two magnetic fields collide and release a lot of energy in the form of accelerated particles. These particles would travel near the speed of light and emit incredibly bright bursts of radiation. It's like a spark of static electricity, but much, much bigger. Another interesting thing to note here is the apparent changing size of the central light, which is just an instrument effect. It's not a physical process around the black hole. In this NERCAM image from JWST, the black hole's accretion disk is less than one pixel in size, and as such, the brightness can seem to sort of move around. JWST is collecting two wavelengths of light at the same time here, with wavelengths of 2.1 and 4.8 microns. This lets the team compare the brightness of the flares in those two wavelengths, and again, they found something surprising. They discovered that the brightness of some events changed in the shorter wavelength before it did in the longer wavelength with delays ranging from a few seconds and stretching up to about 40 seconds. This is the first time a wavelength delay has ever been seen in observations like this, and it may provide more clues about the physics happening in this footage. To study all of this further, it's hoped that more JWST time will be awarded to point at Sagittarius A star, including a proposed uninterrupted 24-hour observation. This would allow the observers to beat the noise you see in data when you point at objects so small and faint as this. It could reveal more features in the disk and flares that we currently can't resolve, and may reveal some pattern in the flares, or perhaps confirm they are truly random in their frequency and timing. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments of this video. I'll do my best to get to as many as I can. Thanks for watching, and if you're new, please do consider subscribing. It's free for you, and it helps me out a bunch. Until next time, stay safe, team. I'll see you soon. Bye!